pop filters everywhere. What's happening, boot junkies? Good to see you again. Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And today, we're going to talk about pop filters. There are a couple of different kinds of pop filters, and we want to see, one, what the different kinds are, and their effectiveness. Are they effective at what their job is? And their job is to reduce plosives. First, let's talk about what a plosive is. A plosive is when a puff of wind, your breath, hits the diaphragm of the microphone and causes it to distort. The diaphragm of the microphone is actually just a whisper thin membrane that moves back and forth and that movement generates electrical energy that goes down the wire to the preamp and does all the little magical electronic things that it does but it's that movement of the of the diaphragm that is the electricity and when you send breath from your mouth into the diaphragm of the large diaphragm condenser actually any microphone but it's particularly bad with large diaphragm condensers uh, it causes it to deform and it creates a very significant bass note, this huge distortion that can essentially, it ruins a take. Uh, and if you send off audio that has plosives in it, nine times out of 10, it's going to get rejected. Now, there are probably magical, some deplosiver VSTs out there. I don't have any, I've never used one. I don't know. There's some editing techniques that uh, you can use to minimize an, an a plosive that exists if it's an irreplaceable take. Like if you went and, and captured an interview and uh, you can't get that interview again and there are plosives in there, you can try and hand edit them one by one. But don't. I mean, it's just retake it if you can. Um, that's long and short of it. So there are three different kinds of pop filters that you can buy and we'll look at some diy type thingies that i've seen people do and we're going to see their effectiveness the first one is sorry for the rumbles there's going to be rumbles as i as i handle the microphone here the first one is oops there's going to be a, a nylon inexpensive pop filter that is fabric and i also have connected to the mic stand we have a metal mesh pop filter two different techniques both in this pop filter format and then thirdly here it is we also have the foam um, squishy sock wind thing that goes on there uh, three different so three different approaches to keeping your breath from hitting the diaphragm so what we're going to try and do is I'm going to talk into them and I'll try and, you know, I'll do with a Peter Piper, you know, uh, tongue twister and, and we'll see if you get plosives. Now, here's the thing about pop filters. They're never going to stop 100% of the wind. If you go and send it, if you like try and beatbox into it, yeah, it's going to plosive. I don't care how good it is. I mean, chances are nine times out of 10, if you if you have even the most expensive pop filter and you deliberately send up into it, it's going to distort. They're not miracle workers. All right. They are to, they're there to try and help you in 90% of the cases. So we're just going to talk normally. I'm not going to try and like plosive the mic intentionally. We're going to see if it, it actually works. Now, a couple of things that we want to look at. Two, uh, effectiveness. And uh, first, effectiveness. And two, does it change the sound at all? Some people will say that the different filters will affect the sound. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to forecast that if they do, it's subtle. You're going to have to have some magic ears to try and determine uh, if there's a significant difference between them. So let's start. We're going to go in order from least to most expensive. How about that? Um, so this one is, sorry, this is going to make some noise as I handle the microphone. So this is a very inexpensive Nady M MPF6. And I've had this one for a few years. This is, uh, is one very typical that you'd have. Um, and this is... Uh, two layers of nylon 
So it's sort of wrapped around a form and then there's an edge around it. And you essentially just get up in front of the microphone and you have this. And the idea of this is to diffuse the air. So it hits the first layer of fabric spreads the air out a little bit. It hits the second layer of fabric. It spreads the air out a little bit more. And the idea is to reduce the speed of the breath before it hits the diaphragm and to slow it down enough that it doesn't deform the microphone too badly. So, tongue twister. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And what I'll do is I'll superimpose the um, uh, the waveform from the DAW from that exact spot and we'll see if there is a plosive. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So there you have it. That is the nylon windscreen. Sorry. The next one we have is the Stedman PS101. Now, this is a single layer, very thin metal. Oh man, I keep touching the mic. Uh, a metal mesh. Now, the Stedman it is stamped in such a way that it's got a very specific pattern. And this idea is not wind diffusion, it's wind deflection. So when you set your Stedman, your metal pop filter in place, and I'm just going to do this as gently as I can. You put this in front of the microphone. And this has, I put a picture of it, I, I took a macro shot of it. This has a, a, a very specific shape. So it's rounded on the top and triangular in the bottom. And the idea is, as your breath goes into it, the shape of that meth, 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 <laughs> I am the one who knocks. Uh, the shape of that mesh makes the air, changes the airspeed. So it's, it's, uh, it makes it deflect almost straight down. It angles that air straight down. The sound goes through and the wind goes deflected down. So if, if you, if you blow into the microphone, you actually, uh, into the filter, you actually feel the air down below. So the air comes in and goes straight down so that it doesn't get into the microphone. It doesn't stop 100% of the air, just stops most of the air. So Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It should, hopefully, reduce the amount of air that goes through it. So if we, if I just do this, and I blow on it, I don't feel the air up here. I feel the air down here. That's weird. I feel the air coming through the microphone, uh, through the pop filter. It goes ding and goes deflected and I actually feel it down below. That's crazy. So that is the uh, PS101 pop filter. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. This one costs... The Nady was, I think, 12 to $15 when I bought it. I'll do like an Amazon screenshot and put it on there so we can see what the current price is. Uh, and the PS101, I just bought this. I think it was $50 for the uh, PS101. And these are going to be your, your two most common kinds of pop filters. This is going to be the most common kind. But I've, I've been uh, using, uh, there's a studio I go to in town, and they had one of these. And I really like the way it works. And I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. Uh, but I really liked the Stedman. Um, so that's, I went and bought one myself. The third kind, and you've seen this in some of my other videos, the third kind is the foam pop screen filter, whatever. Um, and this is thick probably half inch thick foam. It's supposed to be acoustically transparent foam. Uh, and this you slide on top of the microphone. Forgive the noise. You just slide it on there. And its idea is to diffuse the sound and just uh, diffuse the air before it gets to the diaphragm. Similar to this, but it covers it from all directions. So it would be good for omnidirectional mics. It would be good for wind that's outside, not just for your voice. Uh, but then you go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. So uh, we'll do the, the waveform there. I, I, it's, it's hard to tell in here because I have my cans up pretty high. Uh, it's hard to tell if the plosives are. So we'll just show the, the waveform. And they'll either be there or they won't. We'll see them. I'm not going to judge my hearing. I'm going to judge what I actually see in the in the waveform display. Uh, but these are um, these are good if you're uh, if you're 
outside, you're in a windy environment and using a microphone, this kind of fil uh, filter would work better than either the metal or the, or the uh, other ones because this would stop the wind from all directions. If anything's going to color the sound, I think this is the one that's going to most likely color the sound just because it's thick and it's, you know, it's not the same thing as the acoustic padding that I have. Uh, but if there's anything that's going to change the sound, it's this thick foam that's in front of it. It would reduce, likely it would reduce the highs, the trebles. But like I said, it's going to be very, very subtle. It would be, sorry, my alarm's going off. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, it would be very, very subtle uh, because, and, and what I would, what I would say is if you weren't listening for it, you might, you wouldn't probably notice the differences in sound. It's only for like hypercritical listening. Would you notice it? But some people have golden ears and be like, oh, who's got a pop filter and uh, it sounds too warm. It sounds uh, whatever. Um, that's what that is. Okay. So three different kinds of pop filters, 15, 50, and this was 50 to $55. Now that's because this is a Neumann brand. <laughs> so this piece of foam costs more than some cheap USB microphones, which, you know, it's a Neumann. It's like, you know, a BMW cup holder costs a lot more than a Yugo. <laughs> I'll date myself than a Yugo's cup holder, uh, you know, because those premium brands, they have premium pricing for everything. So I'm sure you could get less expensive ones. I just know that Neumann would stand behind their brand. So I bought the Neumann one because if I ever needed to go outside. Now, which one do I like better? Which one do I like better? The one I like best is the, of course, the expensive metal mesh one, the Stead one, Stedman one. And this is the one I've used for all, forever, the, the, um, the nylon one. But I, I hate it. And I tell you why I hate it. Um, it's the size of them. So if you have this in front of the microphone, you want to obstruct your copy as little as possible. And I feel like as a voice actor, you live your life looking through a pop filter. And if your eyesight isn't great, if you wear glasses, the last thing you need is this gray, hard to see through thing in it. So I like the Stedman because it's thinner and it's smaller and it doesn't get in the way. This one, this particular one, the nylon ones, they tend to be darker and harder to see through and they often have this, this thick border around the other side. Now I have seen, um, blue makes these small ones that fit just in front of it. I don't have one. I don't know how effective they are. Uh, and if you have one, let me know in the comments how super awesome it is. I know some of the, the, the front address microphones, they've got smaller ones that just, that just uh, block the air of it. But generally speaking, unless you have one that's made for your microphone, you're going to end up with a large, like a six inch or a four inch one. And I just think that the metal ones for me are easier to see through or see around. That's also why um, I like uh, this style because this is even smaller this doesn't get in your way it does tend to be like right in your face uh, which can be a little bit distracting uh, but for me you live your life looking through a pop filter at your copy and so the smaller and easiest it is to read uh, your copy through that's the one I want and it just so happens that in this particular case the Stedman I can put it right to the side and it's deflecting the airway and I can see my copy nice and clearly. Now, let's talk about some other DIY things that I've seen people uh, do uh, to manage plosives. Um, there's a trick that if you don't have anything and you're in a pinch, you can manage plosives to a small effect with your finger or fingers. So if you put your fingers in between your mouth and the diaphragm, you might take a little bit of the high frequency away, but you can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and your fingers should catch the wind before it gets to the microphone and sort of split the air and send it on either side. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers but then you have to talk with, with your fingers in front like that. Uh, I've also seen people do it with um, pencils. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If you try and get the right in front and hopefully that will uh, distort it, but you do, you do want to try and manage your technique. I've seen people, and I went to my kitchen to grab one of these. I've seen people use a kitchen strainer. And so far as I can tell, this does nothing. 
Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Whenever I've I, I tried this, the sound goes right through it. Kitchen strainers, so far as I can tell, they don't do crap as far as uh, wind deflection or diffusion. Um, the last thing that you can do uh, is you can adjust the mic position. And this is actually, this one does work to a certain extent. It's, it's not a panacea. It's not magic. But if you take the microphone, to forgive my handling noise, you angle it down and you angle it so that it's about 45 degrees to your mouth. So now I have it sort of down and away a little bit and I'll need to adjust how it comes to my mouth. So now it's pointed down and away. It's going to change the EQ of the microphone a little bit, but now my voice is going past the microphone and I'm not sending air, a very small percentage of the air out of my mouth is going up towards the microphone. So this is a, this is a technique called aim the microphone at your mouth and not your mouth at the microphone. So the microphone is aimed down at my voice, um, uh, but I'm sending the wind past it. So the wind, oh man, sorry. The wind is going this way, but the microphone is going this way. And having it angled means that the wind hits it at a different time. So it's not sending a blast straight at it like a clap. It's sending it uh, in, a, in a, a deflected sort of way. So you're not deforming the whole diaphragm at once. You're sending it, a di uh, you're sending the deflection, the, what's the word I'm looking for? You're sending the distortion, the the deformation, the the way that diapho the the way the diaphragm deforms, you're sending it not like this. You're sending it like this, and so it doesn't quite deform. I don't know if I did a very good job explaining that, but the idea is you're not hitting it head on. You're hitting it at an angle, which can reduce it. Uh, and you'll see this. You'll see this in studios. Sometimes they'll uh, they'll aim the microphone at the voice and not the voice, not the mouth at the microphone. It will change the EQ. But as long as you're within the sweet spot of the cardioid pattern and you have a good cardioid microphone, you should be able to get away with this no problem. Just stay in the same spot and it will be consistent. It might sound different than if you're looking at it this way as opposed to this way, but it's going to sound like you. And as, as long as you keep it set up the same way, it's going to carry through the whole way. Then the last thing you need to do is you do need to practice your technique so that you don't, you don't, you don't send a blast of air with your peas. You can learn to sort of hold that pea just a back, just a little tiny bit so that there isn't a Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You can work on the actual enunciation of the P sound so that you're not sending a blast of air. You can put your hand in front of your mouth and as you say those tongue twisters, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, it isn't really a blast of air that's coming out at all. You want to uh, just practice your diction so that it isn't a blast and you can, and I, I, it's something that you, you work on and something that you should work on is working on your diction so that you don't send air into the microphone. And then eventually you might be able to work without a pop filter at all, which is clearly the best because you can, you're not going to color the sound. Uh, you can see your copy with the minimum possible things in front of you. Uh, and so that's it. Let's see. Is there anything else that I need to say about plosives or pop filtering? I don't. The, 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 the summation is pick the one you can afford. They're all going to be somewhat effective. Pick the one you can afford. Don't spend $50 if you can't afford it. Spend $15 if you can. And, you know, if there's a DIY one that you can do for, you know, $3, I've seen some people that put like a sweat sock over. I think that's going to be iffy. Uh, you can certainly try it if you like the way it sounds and you can get away with it for nothing. Give it a try before you go spend $50 on something, of course. But if it doesn't work, then you just you, you, you move on. Experimentation is the key. So there isn't like a, a best one that's going to magically eliminate 100% of the plosives. They're all going to be somewhat effective. They're not 100% magically effective. Uh, and so that's the, the second thing you need to know. Buy the one you can afford, practice your technique, and understand that they're not going to be magic. They're, you, you may have to, to retake, but it's just, a, it's just a function of practice. Nady MPF6 or this one... Uh, 
I'm pretty sure this the, the, that a whole bunch of these are made in a factory in China, and a bunch of different brands have their their brand names silk screened onto it. Uh, so the, mine happens to be a Nady. There's probably a Niwer and a, oh God, a, a, any one of a million that probably have that one, and they, they may be cheaper than what I paid for it. I haven't looked at prices recently. Um, the Stedman is the metal one. There are probably competitors to it. There are probably knockoffs to it. Stedman is the one that I saw that I used in another studio. I really liked it, so I took a picture of it, and I went, oh, I'm going to use that one. Uh, so I like this one because I, I could read my copy. Kitchen filters, they don't do crap. Forget the kitchen filters. They, those don't do anything. Uh, remember the finger and the uh, pencil trick if you need to, and remember you can aim the microphone at your mouth instead of your mouth at the microphone. That's all I have for you with respect to pop filters. I'll have links to all these in the descriptions if you want to go buy one, um, and that's it. Now, go get a pop filter of some sort. Don't blow severe your microphone and record something amazing. Thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little bell if you want to get notified. Uh, subscribe. The You know how it works. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.